guest is not your average veterinarian. People Magazine named him the mm -hmm. sexiest beast charmer alive. So please welcome Dr. Evan Anton. Hello. Welcome, Doctor. Welcome, doctor. Thanks for having so me. look, I I know that you deal with the traditional sort of pets, the the dogs and the cats Absolutely. and all that. But how have you always been interested in the exotic animals? I have. You know, I grew up by a creek, and I was always going after them, looking under rocks as a kid, looking for snakes and insects and turtles, and worked with them. You know, over the last ten years on a pretty serious is level. That you? That is, I'm about uh, 10 or 11 years old there. That's my little buddy Pete, my first reptile what? pet. I got him when I was about four from my grandparents. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's talk a little bit about how, how, do you remember how you purchased or you? you, you my grandparents him? surprised me with them, to be honest. Really? Yeah, and I don't think they knew what they were doing. And that goes into what we'll talk about later yeah. with getting exotic pets. Well, for let's sure. talk about that. How do you know yeah. when you're getting an exotic pet, whether you're giving it as a gift to somebody or getting it for yourself? What is there a certain procedure you want to go through to make sure this is a good, healthy animal Absolutely. tamed correctly? Yeah, no, those are good points to bring up. I, the thing is with exotic pets or any pets, I wouldn't gift it unless somebody knows they're getting it and has done a lot of research. That's the big thing. Before you get a pet like this, you have to know what you're getting into, okay? And that's one of the biggest mistakes I see as a veterinarian when I see patients come in, especially with exotic pets, because uh -huh. they just don't know exactly how to care for this animal. They don't know the right temperature or substrate or humidity sure. or diet. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a common, common issue. So right, is right. that what we're supposed to look up when we're researching exactly. that part of the Exactly, yeah. Research? Find a good resource. Find about what is the natural history of this animal? What are they supposed to be eating? What is their natural habitat like? Mm -hmm. And the best thing you can do as a pet owner is try to mimic that. What do you, can we put our, our just bracket this first? When we say exotic pets, yeah, what, are what are we referring to? So that's to? kind of, there's, there's some gray lines there. So as a veterinarian, I call you know, anything that's not a cat or dog an exotic pet. Whereas a domestic bunny is, is, has somewhat of a domestic yeah. you know, connotation to it. But I consider that kind of exotics in that that's what I treat and that's my profession. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you include like those giant parrots that talk oh, to yeah. you? Is I that an exotic pet? I think those are purely pet? exotic. There's nothing domestic about right, that. Right. And I, I see a ton of truly exotic you know, wild, animals like that. I mean, I see wildlife where I work oh, as well. Oh, beautiful. Uh, but yeah, I see macaws, you know, parrots like that. Uh, pretty regularly as when, well. When, if you're going out and you're, say, my son wants to uh, have an exotic pet, where do, do I go to a pet store? Where do I, how do I find and make sure that they're... There are some reputable breeders. There mm -hmm. are some good pet stores. Um, there's reptile expos and things like that that mm -hmm. have healthy animals. Um, to be honest, it's not the easiest, most straightforward thing. And so trying to get an idea of how do they care for their animals in a pet store. Mm -hmm. Is there a ton of animals in a ton of small cages and they look a little bit skinny and they're sitting right under a heat lamp where they're getting too close? You know, I mean, there's, sure. there's things you look for and if it's something you're new to, it's going to be a little bit of a gamble and a guess. Yeah. So you have helped animals all over the world, not just those who come in and that you take care of that are pets. Take us a little bit. We're going to see a little... Um, uh, clip here. This is from uh, your YouTube channel, right? That yeah. we're gonna see. What are we gonna see? What is this from? Do you know we're gonna clip? see a spitting cobra from Borneo, and this was actually a wildlife uh, educational uh, uh -huh. video that I made. And then uh, another pet we're gonna see was from a serpentarium. I was working with a, uh, a jumping pit viper, and that was in Costa Rica. <sighs> Let's roll wow. it and take a look. Okay. We're talking neurotoxic, stop your lungs from breathing venom. Really scary stuff. They are deadly venomous. Just deadly, nasty venom. Keep that head from coming back up. It's just looking right at me. You just got me. All right, dude. Well, I mean, those are just mean, big hypodermic needles. These venom glands are so big, it's just gonna house huge teeth. So let's see what we're looking at. Just look at that. Look at those fangs. Lots of venom. Lots of venom it's flowing out both sides, dripping out. That wow. is a, that's that's scary. That's just scary. That is so much venom. I would hate to receive a bite loaded with a half ounce of venom like that. Okay. Would okay. that kill you if you got bit by, by bitten by him? Yeah, one of, either of those snakes could make you really sick. The cobra would be a little bit scarier. Yeah. Um, but if you didn't get treated with anti-venom, you would suffer some serious, probably permanent damage uh, from what, either that, them at the I, least. You said that they're spitting, and I saw you were spat on. I was yeah. spat on. Uh, yeah. What? Uh, were you in any danger yeah. at that point? No. Well, I had my protective goggles. I don't know if you could see, but I yeah, had my. Yeah. I wear like these hardware, uh, you know, go yeah. glasses. And so the thing is. The venom is going to be uh, effective against mucous membranes like your eyes or mm -hmm. way up your nose or potentially mm -hmm. in your mouth. And so he got close. He gave me a little venom mustache. I kind of had it right in this area. Oh, really? And so I just wiped it off and rinsed it off. And if it hits skin, you're fine. 
It's not yeah. gonna. It's not gonna hurt you. You know. Uh, the other question I have is why? Yeah, why? Uh, you do this? Why not just stay home and watch the game? I know, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've been asked this question over the years. I don't have a good answer. It's just a true fascination. Sure. I mean, it originally started because they were so foreign to me, seeing snakes. You know, they function so differently. And then these certain snakes that have a venom apparatus, and, and they're venomous, and they can deliver, you know, this deadly substance was just like, wow, how did nature come up with that? And then it just kind of took off from there. Sure. So uh, can we show some of the animals that you actually helped in the wild? I know there's an alligator there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, All let's right. Take a, we have a critter. Can we have that? Take a peek. Take us a little bit. What are we seeing here? So there's an elephant. That was an African elephant. There's a little goat. That was Maasai, Maasai land. There's a kangaroo in Australia, a koala. That was working at a wildlife park in uh, Panama. That's Borneo. That was a really neat river turtle. That's a macaque yeah. in Borneo as well. That was really fun. Got to do some dental work on some critically endangered animals. You're in Sarawak or where were you in Borneo? That was, uh, so uh, uh, part of that trip was in Borneo. That was actually the, the yeah. macaques and the, uh, the, the Bornean river turtle was yeah. in an area called Sulawesi or the island of Sulawesi, okay. which is northern Sulawesi. Um, and there's just really neat, neat wildlife there, and some of those guys are pretty endangered. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I know you have a little something, have something. something. I brought a little critter. I just wanted you, to. Just a little one. Okay. Yeah. Little just one? Let's bring in a little critter. Something we see once in a while. Okay. Let's bring in this. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. That's not little. Just a little guy. What? Thanks, Who Jay. is this guy? This is Reggie. This is Reggie. Oh, you're gonna take that off? Okay. Is he yeah. gonna talk? Because we don't need to take that off unless he's gonna talk. This is oh. Reggie. Whoa, Reggie's what, what an is American Reggie? American alligator. Sure, where are you so going? These guys <laughs> are native. Can I come to... around on the side? Yeah, please okay. do. Okay. These guys, oh, he's talking now. Yeah. What's hey. he saying? Well, it's a talk show. It's he's probably saying, good for him to do that. Let me go. Yeah. <laughs> he's up. No, he's pretty cooperative. So, this is an American yeah. alligator. Uh huh. And these guys are native to uh, Southeast, you know, United States. And so this is a classic, you know, alligator that we see in that part of the country. Sure. And I have a huge fascination with crocodilians in general. Sure. Um, I love them all, and I think it's so cool that we have such a neat species here in this country. And, and there's so many reasons for that. One being, I mean, you know, you just look at them, and, and I just think, man, what a dinosaur. What a, yeah. a crazy, scaled-looking animal. And the truth is, they really are dinosaurs. They've been around, evolutionarily for speaking, sure. yeah, for, I mean, hundreds of millions of years. Uh, how, how old is this? How mature? This guy is about eight to eight or nine years old. And he'll live to be how old, do you think? Decky, I mean, they could outlive us. I mean, it, really? big, big crocodilians can live 70, 80, 90 years old. And will he continue to get bigger? Bite? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Does yeah, he, he can bite. <laughs> bite. So I'm glad you No, he's going to lick why, his, his patient. <laughs> or that's why we're holding the mouth closed if you, here. If you put him on the ground and let him go, would he go? Oh, sure. don't do that. Okay. <laughs> so here's Oh, my him. goodness. Would you like some fried chicken? We have some left over from the oh, Taste of Home chicken. segment. He loves yeah. chicken. I'm sure. Oh. Is, yeah. That's a big tongue I'm looking at in there. Right? It is. is so that... you're looking at his little tongue fold. Uh huh. Yeah, it's okay, buddy. And okay. And there it is. I'll just kind of push it up there. Sure. And so these guys have a you know a big <laughs> mouth and a big bite. Yeah. And the bite force on a crocodilian, including an alligator, is really substantial for their size. I mean, hundreds of pounds per square inch. And in bigger animals, you know, over 2,000 pounds per square inch. Yeah. So is, crushing. Is he crushing your pet? Injury. Is he your pet? Yeah, I just walk him like a dog. He lives with Are my cat serious? and dog. And no, yeah, he so does like not. That. He takes naps no. with me and stuff. No, he does not. <laughs> no, no, no. This, this guy's in a captive situation more conducive. Mm -hmm. And again, with the exotic pets, you know, this is the kind of thing where you got to know what you're getting into and have him in a big space and have a big sure. water body for him and feed him the right food. And what right, do you feed uh, him? What do you feed him? These guys are carnivores. And well, so yeah. whole prey items are the best thing you can feed the carnivorous reptiles. You whole give prey them items. live stuff? No, I try to stay away from live because I don't want them getting hurt trying to eat, and I don't want to make, you know, I don't think there's any reason we need to Make put a live prey item through that yeah. kind of stress. How fast will he uh, go if he needs to, say, take off right now Pretty one of our quick. crew guys? I mean, he's not going to run particularly fast. Faster than you think, right. but not Well, my other question is, how good is your grip? That's I got good. a pretty pretty good grip on yeah, it. I've been handling okay. these guys for a long time. But the thing is, the lifestyle of this animal is that he's an ambush predator, okay? So he's not really spending a ton of time running after things like, you know, like oh. a wild pack of dogs or something. What they do is right. they actually sit and wait. And they wait for prey items to come to him. And then for short term speed, very fast. I yeah. mean, seriously, lightning fast, man. And so if you look at his head, we'll get a nice profile yeah. here. <clears throat> and so I just want you to look, just draw a line from right in front of his snout. Literally, you mean you want to just draw no, a line? No, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh sorry. OK. And so if you imagine we're in a water body, we can just have just the nostrils. And yeah. then the eyes sitting above water. Is it and true? So if he's they, like this, yeah. he looks that's like all a log. 
And he so looks like a log. prey items don't see him, and that's how they can really sneak up on what is, they're going after. Is it true they'd never close their eyes? No, they do, and they actually have a third eyelid. And so I don't know if you guys can get in there and get up close. Can you see that? Oh, wow. So that third eyelid is like a set of goggles. Yeah. So when he goes underwater, he puts that up, the nictitating uh, membrane there, and, and oh, he can see. Oh, God it thought well. of everything yeah. when he made yeah. one of these. Yeah. That's fascinating. Can I touch wow. his back? Can I, will he bite me? If you I don't like it? snakes. How will you touch that? No, that, that doesn't. Oh, oh, careful. Easy now. Wow, that is. They are. It's like a rock. They're just it is. Very, you feel the scoots. Yeah. Look at that. Okay. Oh, I'm just going to sit here. That's fascinating. Wow. They're dinosaurs, man. These yeah. guys just blow me away. He's really good to be on your lap. Um, <laughs> introduce, uh, by the way, um, if you want to check out uh, uh, Evan, you can follow him on Twitter, at Evan Anton, and uh, you can also check your local zoos for wonderful exotic animals. And um, remember, educate yourself if you're going to do this. And um, That's my biggest piece of advice, yeah. yeah. All right, we're coming back. Uh, Matt and Sophie, you are up next. Uh, honestly, after being surprised by that alligator, I think Christina may be having some stomach issues. <laughs> yeah. If you're having stomach issues, I'm going to tell you some great medical solutions and... I'm going to show you some great natural solutions. Yay! <laughs>